you so much. I'm just going. Thank you so much. Hopefully you can um, see my uh, slides now and hear me. Perfect. Um, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us at this Good Practices for Collaboration, the Tearing Way workshop. Uh, my name is Rachel and I'm joined by Emma and Esther today. Um, and we'll just quickly introduce ourselves. So my name is Rachel Ainsworth. I'm a community manager for the Software Sustainability Institute and I'm based at the University of Manchester. I had the pleasure to um, demo and introduce the Turing Way at uh, the Open Science Fair 2019. So we're delighted to share our updates with you since then. And I will hand over to Emma to introduce herself. Hello, I'm Emma. Um, I'm a research associate at the Alan Turing Institute and also Historic England. Um, yeah, I'm a core contributor to the Turing Way, so um, I think Malvika said earlier I write a lot about accessibility, so this year I've invited you about um, adapting your uh, scientific articles for wider audiences, um, also about using GitHub, um, and I really like doing mentoring um, with new members of the Turing Way, um, and I'm also in the Book Dash Planning Committee. Next to Esther. Hi everyone, my name is Esther. I'm a data steward at the Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands. And uh, apart from being a core contributor to the Turing Way, I am also an open research calendar uh, team member. And I'm just going to shamelessly drop the link openresearchcalendar.org in the chat if you want to check that out. It's a calendar for open research events, uh, such as the Open Science Fair that you're attending today. Uh, so as a core contributor of the Turing Way, uh, I contribute primarily to the research data management section because I'm a data steward. So it's very, uh, it connects very well to my daily activities. Uh, so that's my uh, main interest uh, and where I contribute most. And I'm also a book dash planning committee member, which is uh, something you'll hear more about at the end of today's workshop. Thanks. Great, thank you. So uh, you will have heard uh, if you attended the keynote earlier today about the Turing Way, but we're just going to reintroduce it for anybody um, who's just now tuning into the uh, conference. So the Turing Way is an open source project that involves and supports its diverse community in making data science reproducible, ethical, collaborative, and inclusive for everyone. We believe that to make our project truly beneficial and comprehensible, we need to collaborate with people with diverse skills, backgrounds, and domain knowledge. The Turing Way is a project uh, based at the Alan Turing Institute, which is the National Institute for Data Science and Artificial At Intelligence in the UK. And it is developed under the research program called Tools, Practices and Systems. The core values of this program are to embed and deliver trustworthy systems, transparent reporting, inclusive interoperable design, ethical integrity, respectful co-creation and leadership in open research. The Turing Way sits across most of these goals and provides a central resource for good practices to all of the researchers within the UK and internationally. It was started as a book on reproducibility by Kirsty Whitaker, who is the project lead. It was shared as a lightly opinionated guide. This book provides reproducible tools and practices to help ensure that the researchers, funders, policymakers, and all different stakeholders in research know what their responsibility of reproducibility is, where they can make impact, and how they can make their work more efficient and understandable. Uh, Melvika Sharan, who gave the keynote earlier today, is the community manager and co-lead of the project, who oversees the development and expansion of the book and the Turing Way community. So what is the Turing Way exactly? It's made up of a few different things. It is a book. It is also a community where people come together to collaboratively write chapters, build and maintain resources, share their skills and ideas around best practices in data science and research. Um, it is an open source project where we apply open source principles in the development and maintenance of this project. And finally, it's built on the culture of collaboration, which is the process and the backbone of our project. As a community developed resource, the Turing Way is always a work in progress. So like I said, it's an open source project, which means that everyone can freely read, reuse, distribute, modify, and co-develop it. The project belongs to the, the Turing Way community. So we have a sense of shared ownership and authorship. It is built on other open source projects such as Jupyter Book, Netlify, Binder, um, and more. It is open and collaboratively developed on GitHub and released under a CC BY license. 
So everybody is welcome to get involved. We have a code of conduct that you'll need to follow in order to contribute as well as contributing guidelines to help you get started. And you can read more about um, our contributors and, and the types of things that they contribute to the project um, all in our GitHub. So the Turing Way book started in January 2019 as a guide for reproducibility, covering topics such as version control, research data management, code testing, continuous integration, and more, with the moonshot goal of making reproducible research too easy not to do. However, technical skills are just one aspect of making data science research reproducible and open for all. And so since the last time we were here at the Open Science Fair, a lot has um, happened in the past two years. For instance, in February 2020, the Turing Way expanded into a series of guides instead of just the one. So we now have um, a guide for project design, a guide for communication, a guide for collaboration, and a guide for ethical research, in addition to the guide on reproducible research, uh, in order to accommodate all of these crucial aspects in research and data science. All of the community practices that we are developing and practicing within the Turing Way project are recorded in our community handbook so that they can be adopted by other open source communities. We have seen our project and community grow in the last two years. We currently host over 180 subchapters across the five guides. In order to ensure that our community members are able to participate irrespective of their previous experience of working with the open source or data science community, we provide the resources, guidance, templates, training, and pathways that they can use to stay involved in the community. We have over 284 direct contributors on GitHub where we de develop our resources and there are thousands of users. For example, our illustrations, which have been <laughs> intensively used in this talk and also in the keynote earlier, have been downloaded over 6,000 times. We also maintain a social media presence and communicate about the project so that it can reach as many people as possible and that we can bring new voices in. So for a community that started as a grassroots level, we are very grateful to have these members working with us. We promote our resources for use by learners, educators, policymakers, and researchers globally. Some of the notable impact we had in 2020 with the support of our contributors are that the project was highlighted in the EU report for reproducibility for the scientific result, a policy by the mayor of London on emerging technolo technology charter used the Turing way for informing their open and inclusive projects, a funding call from uh, UK Research and Innovation referenced the project for the example of data science culture. Communities for training like Code Refinery and Library Carpentries have cross-referenced the Turing Way, and the work has been cited by multiple peer-reviewed articles. And with that, I'm going to hand over to Emma. Thank you very much. Uh, you're going to keep sharing, Rachel, and then I'll just say next one. Okay, so we're here today to talk about collaboration. Um, so when we're working as part of a research community or a research team, um, why do we actually need to consider and plan for collaboration? Um, and we all work in these teams, but actually making collaboration work can actually be a really hard thing to get right. Um, we might all come from different backgrounds, um, have different skills, have different experiences of working in teams, and also different experiences of working in a collaboration. So also, um, we're now frequently working in distributed teams through online conferencing platforms like this today, um, which can sometimes make communication more difficult. So um, actually planning how you want to collaborate in your team is something that needs to be thought about and planned explicitly. Next slide, please. So um, what does um, collaboration actually look like? So um, when I think about how I used to consider collaboration, I think I would have thought of it as teamwork, um, where there is a leader or leaders, and I have been given some tasks to do, and I get those done as part of the team. Uh, next slide, please. Thanks, Rachel. Um, but um, I think the current me really thinks much more about collaboration and I think about collaboration myself and I think of it as more of a collective effort and I saw actually in the um, shared document someone put my picture my gif in there so you're obviously thinking in, in the same way as me so I, I, I really think of it as this collective effort that should be open and inclusive and I think of collaboration as co-creation which has very clearly defined ways of working within that collaboration. And next slide, please. 
So um, what we want to do now is we're actually going to give you guys um, some work to do. Um, we want to capture um, some of your ideas and experiences about collaboration. Um, so we're going to um, put you all into breakout rooms um, to discuss these questions that you can see here. And we want to um, we want you to write some notes on our shared document and we'll share that document again in a minute because I know there were a few people that came in after we'd shared it initially. Um, so firstly, we want you to discuss um, what are your collaboration regrets, uh, mistakes and lessons learned. Um, and this is really because um, we all know and I know that um, sometimes it just doesn't work um, and we want you to kind of reflect on that. And actually, that's really good to do that and we can actually learn a lot from that. And then secondly, um, what piece of guidance do you wish you had at the start of your current project? So this might be something like um, someone telling you about a particular tool that you could use for collaboration or a particular way of collaborating that you hadn't really thought about before and you wish you had when you started this current piece of um, research or, or project or community that you were doing. So um, please do try and capture your discussion on our shared document. So you, when you get into your breakout room, you might want to um, have someone scribe on the Google Doc um sorry my kids have just got back from school hopefully you can't hear them <laughs> um and please do um so uh, we're going to give you 20 minutes um there is in the google document there is also a cuckoo clock which i will start in a minute um to give you show you 20 minutes um and then we'll all come back to uh, the main room uh, to share our thoughts um and have a bit of a share out for about five minutes so hopefully rachel will take control and put us all into breakout rooms does anybody have any questions real quick before you, we Rachel. break out? If we don't have any questions, then I will go ahead and open up the breakout rooms now. If you don't want to participate in a discussion, you're very welcome to um, just silently work in the, in the collaborative notes document on your own and hang out with us in the main room, but I will create the breakout rooms now. Slides. Can you see my slides, Esther? Yeah. Yeah. Great. So um, we're actually going to send you off on in breakout rooms again because um what we're trying to do at the Turing Way is actually we're trying to sort of re, re um restructure our guide for collaboration. So one of the things we're thinking about is um defining collaborative style. So um, we've been thinking about um, what, what does collaboration mean to or collaborative style mean in different communities and different uh, sort of research teams. So um, what we want to try and capture now is some of your experiences of this, of this way of working. So um, on the, you'll see on the um, shared document um, these questions here. So um, we want you to sort of think about, discuss with the, the people that are in your um, breakout room and um, obviously try and write some notes down if, you, if you've got time um, about um, how you collaborate. Um, so is it open source? So that's a project that's sort of completely open from the beginning or inner source is actually a, a project which is collaborative, but within an organization. So it doesn't release its work um, straight away, but it, it does eventually, but it works in this very collaborative way within an organization. Um, so who are you collaborating? Are collaborating with so can you define that community or team um do you want people to join in or is it as i said more of a closed sort of um collaboration smaller team and why are you doing certain collaborations so like why are you doing co-working if that's one of your ways of collab uh, collaborating why are you using certain ways of communicating which is another way of collaborating uh, when are you doing this collaboration so is it asynchronously or synchronous collaboration and where are you doing it? So mo most of you are probably going to say we're doing this remotely because that, that's what the world at the moment. But are you also having a hybrid model, maybe thinking about that? Are you working in person? Are you going in and seeing people in, in person? Um, 
So those are the different things. You can obviously think about um, defining collaborative style in a really different way, because this is how we're kind of thinking about it. But um, there are obviously other ways of doing that. So if you um, go to the shared document, you'll see a section on there. So I can't remember how long we've got. We're going to send you into breakout rooms. But I'll just stop sharing for a second and ask you, is there any questions? Have I explained that enough, Esther and Rachel? <laughs> Yeah. So it could also be what also would be helpful is if you think there are um, certain because the other thing we're thinking about is also skills that go with these different doing these different things. So um, what skills might you need to work asynchronously or synchronously? That would also be really useful to capture on our shared document. So should we send if there? I'll just wait. Are there any questions? Oh, sorry. Oh, right. Okay. I'll just pause the recording again so that you can also and then just share hopefully the right screen. And then I am just going to go over how we collaborate in the Turing way. Uh, so Hector has also asked about this. How do you collaborate when you're working in interdisciplinary teams? And I think the Turing Way is not necessarily a project that is funded by the European Union and this big research project, but we are quite interdisciplinary. So Emma and I are, have both done archaeology, but also not the same type of archaeology. Uh, but other than that, there's a lot of uh, people with different types of backgrounds in there. Uh, so this could be an example of how you could collaborate in uh, these types of projects. Uh, but again, it's only one example. And uh, we just wanted to highlight how we work together in the Turing way uh, so that you can hopefully also contribute if you're interested. Uh, so I'm going to highlight how we do that uh, through uh, the GitHub uh, repository of the Turing way. A lot of, um, so the book, uh, so the website, is based on a repository on GitHub. And a lot of the discussions and contributions actually take place on that GitHub. So GitHub is a platform uh, where you can collaboratively share codes online. Uh, and so what we do is usually start an issue. And that's, that sounds very negative, like, hey, I have an issue. Um, but it's actually more of a request to the repository to consider something. Uh, so this could be code. Uh, that's uh, usually what happens on a, on a code platform, but it could also just be a very general idea uh, or you spotted a typo or you want to add something to the repository, etc. Uh, so that's what an issue is for. And I'm just going to demonstrate that hopefully a little bit more clearly by having an example. Uh, so this is my own example uh, from 2020. That's quite long ago. Um, but I basically went through the Turing way and I noticed that we didn't really have a section on managing sensitive data uh, and a lot of on sharing data, but not all data can be shared. So I thought having a section on managing sensitive data makes sense because then uh, also researchers who have that type of data can participate. Um, so I basically say, we don't have this, <laughs> can we fix this? Um, and what I then uh, did was post that issue, which allowed someone else to see that issue on the a repository and someone else was Maria. Uh, and Maria was like, hey, I work with sensitive data, I can help. Would you like to get, would you like to work together on this? Uh, and I was obviously very grateful that someone else thought that this was a good idea. It's always nice if people want to collaborate with you on something. Uh, and uh, I mentioned that I already set up a draft text. And then because uh, she proposed to work together on this uh, during a call or a collaboration cafe, uh, I proposed a couple of dates which I could make. And then uh, it's probably good to explain what a collaboration cafe is. Uh, or an online co-working call. So that's what we have in the Turing way. Uh, every Monday, there's an online co-working call and every first and third Wednesday, there's a collaboration cafe, uh, which is basically the same as an online uh, co-working call, but then a little bit more extended and usually a lot more people join. Uh, so it really feels more like a collaboration cafe, but then online. 
And so what we use these two types of calls for is to onboard new people. So you're always very welcome to join. Uh, it's a very easy way to build personal connections, extend your network, um, to support anyone who is working on something for the Turing way. Uh, it also helps for me to have this uh, standard moment in my calendar on the Monday uh, so that I actually work on things because otherwise I never finish my stuff. Uh, so that's also very helpful. Uh, and then if you manage to merge a pull request or, or finish something uh, that you're working on, it's also nice to do that during these calls uh, because then you can celebrate and perhaps discuss also how to continue next. Uh, so that's the collaboration uh, or online working calls. And how that works is um, is basically set up in a in a sort of shut up and write uh, setup uh, with the cuckoo clock that you've also used during this workshop, uh, where we have first a, a short introduction slash checking up on each other, how life is going, etc. And then we have a session, uh, usually about 20, 25 minutes, uh, where we work on, on our things that we're currently working on. And you can either do that through shut up and write, so to say, so literally shut up and, and do the thing. Um, but in my case, for my session on the, the sensitive data, we obviously had a chat and we discussed things. Uh, so that's also a way to do things. These calls can also be very sociable and exchange ideas, et cetera. Uh, which is really great. And the Pomodoro technique, if you haven't uh, heard about that, that's basically these time intervals that you define uh, where you just work briefly on something and then you come back. Uh, you stop that for a bit, take a break, and then you do that again. Uh, so that's just the name of the technique. And then what we do is instead of taking a break is, is mostly just checking how it went uh, and provide some input if needed. So that was, um, so as I said, we basically had a discussion about the sensitive data. Uh, so, and we did some collaborative writing, which resulted in uh, a pull request. And that is something on GitHub uh, where you basically add your contribution to the already existing repository. So basically we wanted to create a section on the website. We wanted to add that. So we requested to the Turing way, can we add this? And I say we, because uh, Laura Carter also joined during this collaboration uh, workshop or, or the cafe. Uh, so she also joined in and provided some input and ideas. Uh, so this was definitely a collaboration. Uh, so we set up a pull request. And this is uh, the summary of the pull request. So it basically says add a section on personal data. So during the discussions, we went from sensitive data to personal data to make it more uh, specified. Uh, and we just wanted someone to check our section because that's what happens in the Turing way. If, we, if you add a new section, someone else will have to review it. Uh, so you can't just add everything that you would like. Well, you can, but then you need a reviewer approval. Uh, so we had a Shinta who reviewed our pull request very kindly. Uh, and he was like, okay, this is great. I left a lot of comments uh, that we needed to address, which very much improved uh, the new section. Uh, and in the meantime, Maria also came up with, with a new um, idea or a request, uh, basically saying we were also worked on something else in the meantime, because that was 2020. Uh, so she also set up a new section and she was like, can we link into that section? Uh, so that all happens on GitHub, uh, where you can just work asynchronously in that sense. Uh, so there you can just put in a comments um, and then I can address that whenever I have the time uh, or the review can happen whenever the reviewer has the time. So those are the benefits of working asynchronously. So we had a review, it was positive. We adjusted uh, the section based on the comments and then it basically gets merged into the repository, um, which, which is then uh, closing the pull request and the issue. So that's what is illustrated on the right. It's now closed, you can still view it. Uh, so someone else could still have a look at it uh, if you want to know in detail what happened. And, and what happens is that we now have a section on personal data management on uh, 
the website in the in the guidebook itself and that actually happened last week yeah i think that was last week and so what i tend to do then is post something about it on twitter uh, just to celebrate that we finally managed to get this section on there uh, because that almost took a year my my god uh, but we got there um yeah and some of us are on twitter so i tagged them uh, and we had a celebration so that was just um one example of how you can contribute so um in that case i started the issue but you really don't need to be able to work with github to uh, start collaborating using uh, the turing way um, for the most part you just need to connect uh, with the turing way so you can also do that by just hopping on a call uh, and just having someone explain things a little bit more to you or just discussing if you have any ideas of what you would like to contribute uh, if you do know how to work on uh, GitHub, you can also just start with fixing a broken link. Uh, that that doesn't, uh, I mean, all contributions are helpful and fixing links is, is very, we're very grateful if there's no dead links in the book. So any contribution is really welcome. Um, as I mentioned, you can also just hop in and discuss. Um, if you're more experienced with GitHub, you can, of course, edit uh, pull requests um, or edit, uh, edit sections and then start your own pull request, etc., and have it reviewed by someone else, or you can review someone else's pull request. Um, but what Malvika also said earlier today is that you can also help with translation, for example. So that's, uh, I don't think that requires any GitHub experience, but if you're interested in that, you can also definitely join. And uh, yeah, joining the community is basically, I'm, I'm not sure if we have an entry level thing, uh, but yeah, if you have any ideas that you share during a co-working call, I think you're part of the community. So it's, uh, yeah, we're very welcome to new contributions. And then if you've been a little bit longer in the community, um, you can still just start a discussion, but um, there's also some other things that you can get out of this, basically finding uh, new collaborators or uh, working with people from the Turing Way on other projects. Uh, Emma and myself have gotten a project going on and I don't think we would have managed to do that without the Turing Way. Uh, so this is also a lovely place to just find some new people to work together on things. Um, and my screen is in front of it, right. Uh, the joining committees uh, one is, for example, um, Emma and myself are in a book dash committee, so you can get some committee and organization experience if you would like to. You can also mentor others, so this is something that Emma already mentioned at the very start of this workshop that she likes to do, so then you can get some mentoring experience. And you can also get some project management uh, experience in the sense of if you add a new section that can be its own uh, little small project that you can lead. Uh, or perhaps you can have other ideas that you want to set up and um, engage with. But it's, um, yeah, in terms of leadership, it's also an opportunity. And uh, there's some new governance uh, shaping things happening in the Turing way that you can also contribute to in the future. So there are some uh, great ways to develop yourself by participating in a community. So there's also personal benefits in that sense. And just an example, today you discussed collaboration. We have a collaboration guide on the Turing Way, uh, which probably could do with some improvements. So if you see anything that's missing or any experiences that you've uh, shared with us today that you would like to add there, you're very welcome to do that. Uh, so you can do that directly on GitHub or you can uh, join a co-working call or a collaboration cafe uh, if you're not sure where to start. What you can also do is join our next Book Dash event, which takes place from the 8th to the 12th of November. Uh, this will be a virtual event where it's basically an extension of these online co-working calls uh, and collaboration cafe uh, for a whole week of virtual uh, collaboration. Uh, that doesn't mean you have to sit behind your computer uh, and just do uh, collaboration and, and co-working, etc. Uh, it's split up into several sessions and you're very welcome to join only a couple of those instead of the full week based on your availability and of course online energy. 
Um, what you do need to do is you can't just join. Uh, we do have an application procedure for this week. Uh, so it's a short application form, which you can find uh, in the URL. And if you have any questions, you can email Malvika uh, or just ask them after uh, I stop the presentation, of course. Uh, but this is a great way to get started uh, in the community. And I can really recommend uh, joining. It's how I joined the community two years ago, a year and a half ago. And I found it very uh, welcoming and nice. So I hope you can consider joining us through uh, the book dash. And uh, of course, as you may have noticed, uh, you can't really do this by yourself. You need a community. So I would like to thank all of our contributors and the community members that we have. Uh, we're very blessed to have all of these people working on the Turing Way. Uh, so thanks to them. And of course, thanks to you for listening and participating in this workshop. And if you would like to get in touch, here, here are some of our um, yeah, connection details and some of the links to just link into the community. We have a Twitter account, a newsletter, uh, and I think you can join the Slack channel that we have directly through that link. Uh, so you're very welcome to join us. And I think that's it, yes. So I'm going to open up the floor for questions again. So I'm going to stop the sharing, pause the recording.